Good evening. Welcome to Keys News. We're live at five. I'm Poppy Smart. And I'm Ellie Johnstone. Coming up on this evening's programme. The term flockdown has been coined by many, but join us shortly to find out why I'm here with these turkeys. Which airport has been named the worst in the country? Jonathan will tell you later. And Evie will be explaining how the cost of living crisis is affecting rent prices for students. We start this evening's programme with some breaking news from Salford Keys, as emergency services have recovered a body in the canal just yards from our studio here in Media City. Our reporter, George Ike, is live on the scene. Yeah, good evening, Poppy and Ellie. It's an incredibly sad story to start the programme with this evening, but at half past ten this morning, emergency services were called to the water here at Salford Keys, just behind me, next to Media City, with reports for concern for welfare. When they arrived here, they did find somebody in the water who sadly was found dead. Now, inquiries are still ongoing and this investigation is ongoing as well. A police officer at the scene this evening told me that at this time of year, the water is between 5 and 8 degrees. If you look over my right shoulder just here, you can see the forensics tent is still in place that's been investigating uh, the, the, the situation here at Media City this afternoon. Uh, but all we know at the moment is that Greater Manchester Police are working to contact the family and next of kin. If you've been affected by what we have discussed, remember there are always people you can talk to. The contact information for the Samaritans will be displayed on the screen now. With the cost of living crisis affecting the majority of people now, including students, our reporter Evie Rafferty is reporting more on how student accommodation prices are rising. Over the past decade, accommodation prices have risen through the roof but next year has been said to make an even bigger impact on its students. Accommodation prices have gone up by 4.4% from last year, which means they've gone up by a whopping 16% from before the pandemic. Many students have longer contracts to others, which may lead to them having to pay a lump sum of more money on top of the original increase. As a student nurse, because our terms are, we have 51 week, um, academic years rather than the normal like 40 we're here for like two months longer so there's never enough money to cover everything as well with being a student nurse we've got to pay for transport to hospitals we've got to pay for uniforms we've got to pay for like reoccurring things that other students don't have to pay for um and the loans and stuff just aren't enough to cover rent the maintenance loan has struggled to match the rising cost of living with just a 2.3% increase. With students barely affording their rent, families may be left with no option but to take them under their wing. I didn't have regular work on the weekends. I'd have to like get my mum family involved to help me pay for it, it's so expensive. Tramways, campus living villages and True all refuse to speak on this matter. With this lack of communication and ever rising prices, where will this leave our students? Evie Rafferty, Keys News, Salford. According to a witch survey, it has been revealed that Manchester Airport has been named the worst in the country. Our reporter, Jonathan Kenwright, has more information on this. Well, I'm here at a very windy Manchester Airport today, but it's not just weather that needs to improve. Manchester Airport was voted this week the worst airport in the UK for customer satisfaction. In a witch survey, it found that Terminal 2, just behind me here, had a 47% approval rating by passengers travelling through. Now, we're into November and the summer season is finishing, meaning that passenger numbers are going to decline sharply. But on the run-up to Christmas, there is cause for concern that we're going to see a repeat of what we saw in the summer. The survey took into consideration factors such as available seating, baggage reclaim and waiting time on your return. In contrast to the poor score received at Manchester, nearby Liverpool was at the top of the list with an 83% approval rating by customers. In response to this survey, Manchester Airport said, We apologise to any customer if their experience was not to the standard we want to deliver. Due to the pandemic, like all airports around the world, we had to cut our costs to survive. 
Well, I think the biggest question for the airport now is how are they going to turn this around for the winter break? Now, the airport has said they're going to be increasing their staffing levels, combating what we saw in the summer, the long delays and the long queues. And I think a lot of people travelling from Manchester over the Christmas holidays will be hoping for a lot less turbulent times. So, Poppy, have you ever flown from Manchester Airport before? So, yes, I flew from Manchester Airport from Terminal 2 recently, which has now been renovated with many more shops, making the wait that little bit easier. The rapid spread of avian flu in wild birds means that anyone who owns or farms birds are now being forced to keep them inside. George Ike has found out what this could mean for your dinner table this Christmas. <laughs> It's the most wonderful time of the year, according to Andy Williams. So why is there so much change for these turkeys that are destined for our dinner tables this Christmas? Flock down, thanks to a devastating wave of avian flu, which has wiped out almost a third of turkeys. These turkeys used to live outside, but since the start of this week, avian flu rules mean they now have to live inside. We've caught up with the farmers who've been looking after them and moving them here, including all the new labour it takes to keep them inside. This is Paul, and alongside his business partner, Connor, they have 500 turkeys on their Lancashire farm, as well as sheep and other livestock. Connor says that having all of their birds in pens makes for an awful lot more work, and it's significantly more expensive. Especially, obviously, with the, where they go to the toilet, where they literally stand, um, it needs cleaning out a lot more regularly because they're not running around during the day. We need to regularly keep putting shavings down, disinfecting everything. Uh, yeah, it uploads it by a, a fair amount. But there's been widespread concern there might not be enough turkey to go round this Christmas. We're certainly noticing that we're selling a lot of turkeys a lot earlier than we usually would. There's the risk of avian flu and being wiped out from it. The birds would probably all be dead by the time the results had come back. It's that fast. You're probably talking 24, 48 hours. So the, once, once you've got it, that is it. But then there's also rising feed costs because of the grain that would usually come from the Ukraine. But with a shortage of turkey coming this Christmas, many are beginning to think about what they'll be putting on the table come the 25th of December. If turkey's not available this year, I might go for an alternative chicken. I normally do lamb or chicken. No idea. My daughter gets it. But you wouldn't be going vegetarian this Christmas? No chance. <laughs> With turkeys flying off the shelves and out of pens with still over a month until the big day, it's looking like many of us will be ruffling some feathers at the dining room table this Christmas and breaking tradition with an alternative meat. George Ike, Keys News in Lancashire. So, luckily for me, I don't eat meat, so that won't affect my Christmas meal that much. What about you, Ellie? Well, I do love a good bit of turkey on Christmas and I'm rather worried about what alternative my family is going to pick out for us. We asked you what you think the best meat alternatives are. Jessica Blackburn says, I'm usually meat free, so Christmas will be business as usual for me. Corn is my preferred alternative. Or Linda McCartney if I've got a little extra cash. Max Hayes says, bird's eye is great free, meat free alternative. Cheap as well, especially in the cost of living crisis. Natalia Petru says, oh no, I can't believe this. I can't have Christmas without a turkey. It's like having Christmas without a Christmas tree. It's a must. Keep telling us your opinion on Twitter at Keys News. And now, without further ado, Salford City Council have a huge variety of different support groups, including an LGBTQ plus group, which has newly been established in Earlham. Isabel went to find out more about why these groups exist. A place to feel supported, safe, motivated, or if you generally just wanted to chat. Salford City Council have a huge variety of social groups, which range from arts and crafts to more serious issues, such as keeping well and mental health support. I've been invited to join the LGBTQ group that supports those who are struggling with their identity and to talk about any related issues. I'm here to create awareness of the importance of groups like these and what it means for the community. Well, um, I hope it means the same as it means for me, which is a safe and non-judgmental space, just to talk to each other, you know, just, just to feel normal for once yeah. in my life, yeah? One in four people suffer with mental health, therefore groups like these are vital and really help with emotional support and loneliness. It was the main reason I actually started that, because I can see, uh, especially after COVID um, uh, pandemic, um, isolation was massive and still going on 
Uh, so I'm really hoping that mental well-being is going to be addressed so I can extract people who will need that. And it's important that there's some something here, what is funded, that people can come to, the younger, older generation, our trans community, our pansexual community, any part of our community can come to somewhere where they can feel like they can be themselves and find information and, and help them feel relaxed. It's the voice of the LGBTQ and that's what it needs a plus. LGBTQ plus is the voice of the LGBTQ plus and that's what I've always debated for years as a radio presenter and as a TV presenter that there should be a smaller clearer, it needs a voice, it needs a voice. It's clear how important groups like these are to the community. The group is held here in Iram every Tuesday at 3 till 5 in the afternoon. So pop down, have a brew and a good old chat. It might even be the highlight of your day. Keys News, Isabella Norrison. That's all from us tonight. You can catch more of Keys on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you and good night.